grotto or stable? Why do some Christians celebrate Christmas on December 25th, and others on January 6th? And contrary to appearances, it is not about changing the calendar, although this has mixed up a lot in the history of the Bible, and above all in the history of Jesus' life. Yeshua ben Yusuf is the most mysterious of the prophets. Historically, we don't really know anything about him. It is worth remembering that he was a Jew by origin, although for actual Jews descended from the people of Israel it was not such an obvious issue. This is sad news for anti-Semites and they will probably get a little lost. At that time, the Jews were divided into many states and states. Attachment to the region and locality was as strong as it is today in Italy. At that time, the most important Jewish states were Israel, Judea and Moab. Jesus came from Judea a country whose capital was Jerusalem and Hebron. However, it was definitely higher than the historical state of Israel. Judea is the country of David, a king who, contrary to biblical stories, was not a poor shepherd at all, but a total Machiavellian, who consciously overthrew Saul, his father-in-law. This country ruled as well part of what is now Syria was also the state of Judah, or Judea if you prefer. According to all ancient biblical texts, only the people of Israel have the right to call themselves the Jewish nation. Although both Judea and Israel come from one person, Israel does not accept Judea. Judah was always more tolerant and open than let's say, rightful, Israel. For example, women had more rights than in Israel, on which the Muslim tradition would later be modeled. This is where women had to be completely covered and go out at night. Such a law did not exist in Judea, and the international trade of the Kingdom of Judah and intermarriage discouraged the inhabitants of Israel, rightful. Both countries were at war with each other. This is an example of the total chaos that exists to this day in that part of the world. Since this is not the subject of our considerations, let's leave it for another time. On the advice of Pope John Paul II and Benedict XVI, it is best to simply call Jesus, the Nazarene. From the city of Nazareth, where he grew up and was, in a sense, registered. This is how the biblical world functioned at that time. Today, this is possible to meet for exemplary in Italy, where for example, people say about their nationality, Milanese, I am from Milan. This is due to the historical division of the country into Italian principalities, the same thing happened in the region of today's Palestine, Israel and Lebanon in the times of Jesus. Yeshua ben Yusuf is also a very important prophet in Islam and several minor religions of the world. However, he is not a prophet in the Judaic religion. He could not be him, even just on historical issues, because this religion was created before him. We will not find him in Mazdaism either. A bit forgotten, but still the existing first religion of the book. This is also a quite often heard mistake. Presumably he was born from the law of the first night, i.e. Yusuf could not be his biological father, but some important Roman or Jewish governor, to whom the city was subject. Some want to attribute parenting to Pilate, of course it is not real, but there is a more shocking possibility. The law of the first night survived in Western culture until the late Middle Ages and was nothing but a legal rape made by a great gentleman on pretty girls from the town which he ruled. He replaced his spouse during the first wedding night. The refusal was threatened with death. The famous exemplary is the wife of William Wallace famous for his film with Mel Gibson. In fact we has no idea why she died. Yeah, I lived several years in that city. There's a memorial on that house which belonged to her. Yeshua has four brothers James, Joseph, Judah and Simeon. James's grave was found quite a long time ago. He was killed by Saint Paul because he wanted religion to continue to do circumcision and not go out with his brother message outside by the world of the Middle East. James rightly worried about the distortion of Jesus' words, which would have to be adapted to a completely different culture. He wanted it to be a faction of Judaism, that this new current had an impact on the Judaism and the philosophy of this religion. He believed that the slaves to whom Paul was headed were not able to fully understand this mentality and would distort Jesus' words. It's hard to say if Christianity would disappear. Probably there would be no religion on such a scale. James was right. His brother's words were distorted, and the further it was from the first religious clusters, the worse. They will raise their voice. Some have drained fragments. Some do not read and has no idea why they go to the temple. 
Indeed, they exist in the Bible, but in translations it was very good hidden who they were. They appear as cousins, half-brothers, which is already closer. Sons Joseph, but few cards before we read that he had no family. There are different versions. This was certainly due to vocabulary, which is poorer for family affinities in the Middle East, and the prepositions facing before. However, Paul and those who wrote the books also had their goal in this. They wanted to create not only the Son of God, but God. Brother did not fit here. The brothers were fought, so there was nothing to brag about either. It is not true that Jesus was not literal. We know he wrote on the sand. Maybe someday we'll find his lyrics. Religion, especially Latin from Luther, may then fall. The brothers are a problem for theologians, philosophers and religious scholars to this day. We have a tomb with Jesus' brother clearly writing on it who he is. And we would love for this grave to be blown up so that it wouldn't be a thorn in our side. James, contrary to popular belief, destroys most of the dogmas of religion, which is why elaborate stories about him continue to be created. This is unfortunately a Luciferian verse. And also confirmation Nemo potest personam Dio fare. This is what happens when a repeated lie or concealment of the truth begins to live as the truth even though it is not. And finally the truth comes out, and this creates a huge problem. James is a saint in Orthodox Christian churches. The brothers also undermine the dogma of eternal virginity, although the birth of Jesus undermines it. James, is recalled by Tacitus himself. So it was known that it existed from the beginning and was erased from the very beginning. The Roman Empire has always been divided into the western and eastern part, although it was not always visible on the map. The official language of the East was Greek, while Western Latin. There was also a different issue of customs and it is true that in the Western part Jesus would never have a chance. East was open to philosophy, science, and various views the Eastern part gave the freedom of their thoughts. In Jesus' times, there were many people who had different theses and views. John the Baptist himself is one of such people. So why did this man go down in history? Well, only thanks to what Pilate did and Longinus. It's quite a bit funny but Pontius was his surname. Name of family, from that born surnames. The governor, wanting to please Caesar Tiberius, went out ahead and crucified the man after a rather mediocre trial. It is worth recalling that Tiberius was very interested that case. He sent his spies to examine the case and it is highly likely that if it wasn't for the fact that he was murdered by Caligula, Christianity would be established by the state religion already during Tiberius. Pilate was called to Tiberius, and he ordered to drown him in Tibra with the famous quote, Fool, you do not even know what you did. You know how many people similar to him walks around this part of the world and called prophets themselves. If he would live to his years in peace, the world would forget about him, you fool gave them a martyr. Martyr for faith and for conquering their lands. Single quote single quote dot. Tiberius was absolutely right. Zeal is worse than everything. We know for sure that Yeshua existed because documents have been preserved with the date of death, on the thirteenth day of the month of Nisan in the seventeenth year of the reign of Tiberius. What else we know is that in the twenty-third year of Augustus' reign, a census was taken and such a boy was recorded there. The first chronology of Jesus' life was created by the monk Dionysus the Lesser, but unfortunately he was a poor mathematician and was wrong by several years. Then there were changes to the calendars, establishing new forms by adding days, calculations and conversions. Unfortunately, each time it can be said that an increasingly idiotic mathematician was doing it. As a result, we are rejuvenated from 7 to 18 years, and the calendar confusion is so great that even today those distinguished people have a problem with exactly how much this mistake is. Therefore, Jesus is also rejuvenated by 7 or 18 years. Therefore, every educated priest, pastor or other theology expert, when determining the dates of Jesus' life, uses the calendar system that existed in his times, i.e. according to the reign of the Caesars. What about the census? When we read the Bible with understanding, we will notice that there are two different dates for the census ordered by Augustus. This may result from a mistake by the author of the text, or most likely from the fact that the census took longer. It didn't happen like it does nowadays, when a man came to the house with a piece of paper. According to Josephus, the census takes place in 6 AD. 
Under Quirinius, Quirinius is a most appropriate figure because he operated in Judea, not, let's call it, Israel right. However, documents from Syria talk about a census in 9 AD, and Syria is part of Judea. The only explanation is that the census lasted for several years. Most likely, every citizen had to appear at the place where he had any property and prove that he was its owner. There were no railways or cars, and a donkey was a luxury. This also explains why Joseph goes to Bethlehem. He had to prove that he had property there, although the family later lived in Nazareth. We still have a star. Contrary to appearances, it is not an invention and can be observed from time to time, although the astronomical phenomenon then present was not a star. In 1604, this strange phenomenon was described by Johannes Kepler. An astronomer observed a conjunction of Jupiter, Saturn and Mars combined with a supernova in the constellation Pisces. Today, there is no doubt that such a phenomenon took place in ancient times, because it is confirmed by Chinese texts. However, seven years earlier than the common, erroneous date of Jesus' birth. So such a phenomenon could actually take place when Jesus was born. What's next? Figures of the three kings appear, today it is believed that they were magicians, alchemists, and philosophers on a journey sent as ambassadors. It is doubtful that they would go to Jesus himself. Perhaps they were simply staying at Joseph and Mary's house because of the bad weather. This event probably did not happen exactly on the day of birth, but a little later. However, this is this so-called holiday which the first Christians celebrated Epiphany as Christmas. This is Frist holiday in the Hattori of Christianity. This was Jesus' first meeting with people outside his close circle. On this day, the Orthodox, Copts and all Eastern churches still celebrate Christmas, and interestingly enough, Spaniards and Italians also celebrate this day more and give out gifts on this day. It is still the oldest Christian holiday. And why does the West insist on December 24th? It's a bit of a longer story. Were they people from distant corners of the world? Yes and no. The word, Tarshish, appears in the text. Tartessos is a recently discovered mysterious state in Spain, which, according to text analyses, was an economic power, living from gold and silver mines, maintaining contacts with the Middle East, ancient Egypt and Greece of the times of Mycenae. We also know the story of one of their kings, Arganthonios. However, we do not know whether this is his real name or, as we would say today, nickname, Argentum, means silver in Latin, orum, means gold in Latin. This man is described by historians from all over the world and we probably have his image. We do not know who founded Tartessos, but today it is generally believed that initially it was a Phoenician colony, which over time, like Carthage, separated from the mother country, becoming a strong independent state, maintaining diplomatic contacts with the mother country, popularly called Phoenicia, although there was a group of poles, just like the Greeks. The cradle of the Phoenicians is today's Lebanon, so an expedition from a distant country could have taken place. Of course, there is also the wonderful kingdom of Sheba, today's Oman and Yemen. Over time, legends added names and skin colors to the characters. And probably the most interesting question, who could be the father of Jesus if he was the fruit of the right to the first night? The Bible says that Herod too, afraid of losing his throne, decides to slaughter the innocents. Herod has something to be afraid of. In the war between Augustus, Antony and Cleopatra, he sided with the latter. He was not liked by Rome. Augustus would love to put someone on the throne instead of him. August is an outstanding politician and a great actor. He never took the title of Caesar, king, or ruler, even though he really was one. Thanks to this, Rome believed that it was still a republic, although power rested in the hands of one person. He was also well aware that this area was always boiling. Herod's family is pathological in every respect, but placing a new dynasty on the throne could cause even greater unrest. So August applies the old rule. Don't scratch if it doesn't itch. Herod begins the slaughter of infants with his own children. Miraculously, Archelaus survives and, interestingly enough, is also trying to kill Jesus. If the courtiers cared so much about the death of an unknown child, one answer comes to mind. Herod exercised his right on the first night. Although these are just a few people's guesses for now, the writers may as well have wanted to give a higher importance to the birth of Jesus by referring to the story of Herod's murder of his own children.
then Jesus would not really be in danger. Historically, no other massacre of children has been recorded than the one outside, which was commonplace at this court. In the 4th and 5th centuries, the doctrine and theology of Christianity began to be created. Some of the texts that were less in line with the political system of that time were removed from the canon of the Bible, the so-called Today Apocrypha. It is worth reading them to have a complete picture of the Christian religion. Interestingly, texts by people who had nothing to do with Jesus at all, because they lived many years after him, were added, Mark, Paul, Luke. Significantly, they were friends. Luke and Matthew describe Christmas most thoroughly. Matthew is not very popular in the liturgy like Luke. Both texts are quite different from each other. Now we come to Christmas itself. Grotto or stable? Well, we have to agree with Pope Benedict XVI that probably both. Why? If anyone reading has been to Cappadocia, they immediately understand what I mean. The same thing happened in Israel. Yusuf is a shepherd and carpenter. He certainly had at least a small herd of sheep and goats, just like everyone else at that time, even for his own needs. Since he has two estates, he is probably not a poor man in the opinion of the time. At that time, rock caves were used as stables, and shepherds hid in them with their animals while grazing at night. There were also rock dwellings, as in Cappadocia. Jesus may have been born in a cave while traveling between Bethlehem and Nazareth. Let us also remember that in houses of that time animals lived with people. The stable could be a grotto, and the grotto could be a stable. There could just as easily have been a stable itself, and only later a cave that would appear when the magicians met, as some Italian theologians believe. Perhaps it was true that Jesus was born in a stable. When the family traveled, they might not have found a room and stayed with their animals. It could also be that Mary was actually giving birth at their house. The labor pains came unexpectedly and there was no point in moving the woman in labor. It could have happened while feeding the animals and we have a stable. We can discuss this topic forever and wonder where to place whom. Why was the cave closed in the Latin tradition? It is also worth taking a look at Pope Benedict XVI's a book about Christmas. The Roman Empire by the time of Jesus was practically monotheistic. There are various cults that worship only one god. The most popular is Saul Invictus. Typical polytheism no longer exists. Although there are many deities, each person chooses one religion that worships a given god. The series about Jesus is truly one of the first Catholic books so honest and objective, despite being written by the Pope. Of course, these are theological books. They were written by the Pope, but they do not focus solely on theology. The Pope does not judge in these books. He also points to history, although he notes that it is a book mainly about the life of Jesus in relation to theology. Still, he makes him more a human. We can choose whether we want a prophet or the Son of God. This is truly a book for everyone. Not only for Catholics, but also for those who want to learn something about this trend in Christianity but are not associated with this religion. There are also many references to other Christian trends and their perception of a given topic. In the 2nd century in the Roman Empire, the cult of Tammuz Adonis, who was worshipped in caves, was also very popular. The cave is also the cult of Hephaestus and we will find a few more deities associated with caves and grottos. When Christianity became the state religion, pagan elements had to disappear. The cave became dangerous. In general, for some time the motif of presenting the birth of Jesus from Christmas celebrations will completely disappear and will only appear in the Middle Ages in the form of a nativity scene. Therefore, the question whether the cave or the nativity scene is a question like the egg or the chicken. We should also rule out the fact that the three kings arrived immediately after Jesus' birth. The shepherds could have been there, but the kings reached Jesus much later, when he was a little older child. What animals could have been there? Cows are more of a European invention, in that part of the world they would have been unsustainable back then, although the evangelists, wanting to refer to Isaiah, mention oxen. Oxen yes, but no cows. There was definitely a dog too. Why is there no dog in the modern nativity scene? It's pure ideology. The dog was associated with representations of Anubis and Seth. In the new religion he had to disappear. Dogs have become too closely associated with pagan deities, but it is impossible to imagine a shepherd without a dog. 
unless it's the EU one that has holes in the fence or doesn't have one at all, so that wild animals come to it, so that he can receive compensation that often exceeds the value of the killed game. Joseph, as a shepherd, would probably not function without a dog, even if he was only a carpenter and had several animals only for his own needs, he had to have a dog. No shepherd would function without a dog. There could have been sheep, although goats are more popular in this climate. Sheep are again a reference to old texts. Its symbolism, the most valuable animal was certainly present, the donkey. When the caravan arrived, camels appeared. Living nativity scenes are a bad idea these days. Horror of horrors, they shouldn't be in places where there isn't a guard standing, hitting people on the hands. Unfortunately, humans are too dangerous to leave animals unattended for the people's pleasure. The saddest example is a donkey that was brutally beaten despite being monitored. Interestingly, in the Western Church, the nativity scene has been present traditionally since the time of Saint. Francis, was recognized as a form of cult only by Pope Benedict XVI. Saint Francis is popularly considered the creator of the first nativity scene. John Paul II introduced the tradition of the Christmas nativity scene in St. Peter's Square in the Vatican. In Eastern Rite churches, an icon depicting Christmas is displayed on the occasion of the holidays. There is no Christmas tree either. And finally, the most important information, where the date 24 twelfths came from. There are some not-so-nice answers. There were cults of certain gods that were so ingrained in Western Roman culture that they could not be removed from life. We are talking about the cult of the god Attis. Attis is a god who came from the east, and his cult quickly took root in Rome. The god's temple was located in Ostia, the port of the city of Rome. Today this ancient part of the city is quite far from the sea, but the modern part is located by the sea. Of all the sculptures of deities in the ancient city of Rome, the most and best preserved are those of the god Attis. What shocks us about this statue? He looks like a man, yet he has no genitals. Because he doesn't have them, he mutilated himself. The story of Attis is closely related to the story of Adonis, they are similar. Attis falls in love with the goddess Cybele. However, she rejects him. In despair, Attis cuts off his genitals in a frenzy. He bleeds out and dies. In another version, Cybele falls in love with Attis, but she wants him to remain chaste so that she can be his first lover. This results from human nature. The first love relationship blindly attaches to the other person, because there is no comparison. Therefore, to the 16th century, it was believed that it was good to do it with a person with whom we were not related, so that then we could also use our head in a real relationship. The boy promises this, but when he sees the nymph Songaris, he falls in love and wants to marry her. Then Cybele sends on him madness, and the man, who does not know whose one he should to choose, cuts off his own genitals. Cybele will make Attis a god and create relationship with him. Thanks to Cybele, he becomes the deity of vegetation and fertility. However, he must die and be born again every year. This is the most popular version of the myth. Romans are blood-loving people. No wonder the cult of Attis caught on. His priests cut off their genitals, and once a year on December 24, a festival was held in Rome in honor of Attis. Priests dressed as fauns, known as corabants, went into the city whipping and pricking passers-by with spears, encouraging them to commit debauchery. There were one big orgy. On this day, actually everything was allowed. It is also the astronomical solstice, and therefore the beginning of fertility. Saturnalia is also held in Rome on this day, and since Cybele is associated with Rhea, the wife of Saturn. The day begins to lengthen from December 25th. Rome is bloody and debauched. It loves blood, as evidenced by the monuments left behind by this culture. The cult of Attis and Cybele, with its cruel ceremonies, found perfect ground. Corita is nothing more than a remnant of the cult of Attis. After all, after stabbing a sacrificed bull in the arena, Sinners washed themselves in its blood to the glory of the god Attis. The Spanish are the perfect heirs to Rome in every respect. They are like ancient Romans. They will remain the most cruel nation in history after the Romans. Street. Basilica Peter stands on the site of the former temple of Cybele, although it was not the first residence of the popes. This is also proof of how strong the cult was. There was no other choice. 
All attempts to make only 6.01 known in the West failed. If Christmas was to exist in the West, it had to creep into the place of the most popular holiday. So slowly, Latin Christmas took the place of another holiday, and at the same time, to keep the tradition, it had to be divided into two days. In Western Europe, the monument most closely associated with Christmas is Santa Maria Maggiore in Rome. The basilica is one of four papal basilicas. This is where the Pope celebrates Mass on Christmas Day. The famous icon of Our Lady of the Snows, Salus Populi Romani, and the relics of the Lord's Manger are located here. Of course, things are different with these relics, but the tree actually comes from that time and region. The Rere will probably be a wise person who would like to say who believes in such nonsense. I'm not saying I believe, I'm just giving information, although Salus Populi Romani itself is unusual for my family. It is no secret that my dog was found near the church with a copy of the icon. He was extraordinary. He was supposed to live for two months, but he lived ten years. He wasn't supposed to walk, but he walked and ran. I always say that in my family there were grandparents and dogs, and then there were parents, but when you have an unnecessary child, you probably don't take care of it. They needed a person of a different gender to make their dreams come true. Elizabeth York, if she was the one who noticed it, told something sensible, in the family you can love each other, but that doesn't mean you like someone. This applies to the relationship between my mother and me. She compared me to others, criticized for so many years that I stopped liking her. It was wonderful on the street, but at home, even what I did wrong on the street was analyzed. At least that's not how I smiled at my uncle. It should have been broader. Nothing was done well, he keeps doing it. Today I know she doesn't like me. I'm an adult and I get it. I don't seek her attention because it always ends with her being pushed away. I don't even tell her about important things because I know she won't listen to me. He listens to everyone around him, but not me. She would probably listen to my father now, but he won't tell her anything. This is something my grandfather already noticed. My mother's love begins when you die and it is an obsession. Such flowers on the monument, arranged like this, but not like that. Don't expect it in your lifetime. Unless you're a stranger and say yes to everything. My dog was a magical creature. He loved snow. When he was dying, snow fell again for the first time in several years. For these few hours, he sat and watched as snowflakes fell on him, covering the whole world. He then looked at the sky and waggled his nose. The other dogs didn't go out. They were cold. Only Morgan. Morgan had a knack for bringing family together. Many unusual things happened that day, but he was a cynocephalus and if someone didn't believe in something, that day believed it. I hope I won't forget the moment when he left and a flock of honking geese flying towards the house appeared in the sky. The neighbor's horses started to roar and all the dogs in the area howled. And this sudden silence. Alpha died. As this German geneticist noticed the same thing, although he was brutal, he spoke the truth on these matters. One German famous geneticist mentioned about the same thing, even though he was brutal, he spoke the truth in these questions. Sometimes even someone empty will sometimes smuggle words of truth into his lies. The neighbors came out and didn't know what was happening. Dogs never made a sound like wolves. We didn't argue near him, and when he left it got worse. In the end, they were strangers, although related, but they had gained something only to lose it. Their financial advisor should be left on the first tree, but he is still the smartest one. My father tried to found an evening film to kill time, play with cat and create the myth that we are doing something together. Now it's a hotel. Since you came, my mother has been talking, but not to me, because there is no topic about it. Left phone. I don't blame her. I hope she doesn't bring my god sister here after he dies because I want you to live here. I never cared about this house. You all would be a good family for her, all tough would be difficult days. Now is still shame, one day it disappear when relation will be closer. She'll need someone because I'm sure she'll take out another loan. He financial advisor should be on first tree. With my mother, you don't have to try too hard to fake illness. She'll come up with a theory for this. She heals best on her own. The fact that it eats me in the same way as my father, but she doesn't notice it I don't try too hard. I even limp because I have to. The fact that it's an incurable genetic disease won't do much, but she doesn't notice it. 
Even if she complains that I won't do something, she starts it with a fight because that's what she wanted at that moment, and you're working or do smething different. Most often is need to do something in the moment when you work. She won't think about the fact that, for example, I can't see at the moment, or that I have pain in my adrenal glands. Even when I'm sitting on the couch in strange position, because then I not feel pain. Others, when they send text messages about their illnesses, she will call back, but mine she wouldn't see. The cult of Salus Populi Romani, or Our Lady of the Snow, is associated with Christmas. It is a combination of the pagan cult of the Snow Queen, from the Piedmont region, with religion. The ritual itself is extraordinary. If anyone has the opportunity to visit the first capital of United Italy in winter, it is truly worth seeing. Torino is surrounded by mountains. We see the Matterhorn in good weather. There Our Lady of the Snow is depicted as a figure. I will always wonder if he saw her like this. We mentioned the icon when discussing Byzantine art. The only Western icon. According to records, in the hot summer of August 5, in 352, snow fell on the Roman hill of Esquiline. This event was to be preceded by apparitions in which the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to the patrician John, telling him that he would become the father of a long-awaited child, in return for which he would fund a temple, and to Pope Liberius, anticipating John's request, for permission to build a church. The sign of the place where the building was to be built was to be snow. To commemorate this event, the temple was named Our Lady of the Snows. The tradition was taken up by Pope Sixtus III, expanding the temple as a votive offering commemorating the announcement of the Theotokos dogma, on the Divine Motherhood of Mary, by the Council of Ephesus. The name of the rebuilt basilica was changed to Santa Maria Maggiore, Our Lady Major, as one of the four major basilicas in Rome. Paul V built in the basilica, opposite the chapel of Sixtus V, a chapel lined with marble, Borghese Chapel, in which an image of Our Lady of the Snows was placed on an altar inlaid with agates, amethysts and lapis lazuli. This snow fell in August, but as a result of the cult's connections, it is in Santa Maria Maggiore that Christmas celebrations begin, of course. We are talking about one part of the world and not another. There were no spruces there, no snow either. However, I doubt that people from North America and Europe can realize this. There are also red flowers from Latin America. They certainly weren't there. Besides, they shouldn't be around children and animals. Few people know about it. At the food they shouldn't be, but in supermarkets they often sit attractively next to vegetables. Animals speak with human voices. Well I guess we should mention the removed fragments and cynocephalus. Also those from Christianity and Islam. Unfortunately, the Latins erased this cult in the Middle Ages and changed their approach to animals, and the effects of this are still visible today. Orthodox Church has a different approach, which does not mean that animals lead a wonderful life, but from the point of view of religion, their situation is better. Only the holy dear Hubertus remained with the Latins, but the further from Catholicism the less knowledge about it, although it is a beautiful legend with a moral. Ustache in Orthodox Church Yes, but we also know how many priests are educated in remote towns. This is also a topic for another meeting. In Orthodoxy, there is not such a strong attachment to Christmas, according to Epiphany, although in most countries, even in Russia, under the system that did not support opium for the masses, the holidays began from New Year's Eve, through Epiphany to the Russian New Year's Eve. A few days after Epiphany. In Catholic satellites, holidays started on December 25th and lasted until January 6. In Scotland, Christmas was forbidden, and they were supposedly pious at that time. It came back recently. In addition to the Christmas Basilica in Bethlehem, which also belongs to the Orthodox. Certainly the chapel in Cairo where, according to legend, the family hid during their escape. Another version says that it is their home. Very small and photography is not allowed there, but an interesting place practically in a tenement house. Saint Nicholas is no longer buried in Turkey. His body was moved, although Muslim Turks also like to visit this place. I think that of all the saints, he is the nicest person. Some people, if you look at them, are not role models. We are talking about the historical Saint Nicholas, not Santa Claus. His attitude is certainly worth imitating. Giving a gift to poor children without having to say thank you. 
This need to say thank you always raises the question of whether the gift was given sincerely or just to boost someone's ego by you thanking them. In Turkey, gifts are given for the new year. Rovaniemi is an extraordinary place. It's worth going there for Christmas if you can. I was there once. Right at this time. A year later, my uncle shot himself on December 25th. A dog who survived him by 15 years sat faithfully next to him. He died at the age of 18. This is an unusual age for a pointer. It was the only normal Christmas in this family. Generally, holidays meant a row. After the gifts, my mother would calculate how much they cost, so no one wanted them. My father, on the other hand, could make a fuss because someone forgot to turn off the light, or he simply took things to another room and had no way to turn it off except through his nose, but he wanted to turn it off when he took everything out. My grandfather and I stopped liking the holidays. At first they were a little embarrassed in front of their grandfather, but then they had no restraint. A day of not working, spending time with family and dogs, it was irritating. People who shouldn't have a family and that's it. Theological uh, Orthodox churches celebrate the epiphany, i.e. the appearance of Christ to the world, and thus recognize that he was born for the world. A slightly different meaning than the Latins, who decided to create a second holiday for political reasons. Although some Eastern Rite churches, especially the Uniates, i.e. those who chose the Vatican as their governors, also celebrate this holiday on December 25. From 2023, also Ukraine, which results from the previously discussed conflict in the structures of this church, we talked about an episode about the Orthodox Church, the conflict is clearly getting worse. Unfortunately, this man is known for his creativity, which is why others Orthodox churches looked at him unfavorably, but again I refer to the official websites of various branches of the Orthodox churches, where you can read about it. Mostly it all starts on January 6, a day that is either Christmas Eve, and holidays follow on the 7th. Christmas Eve is actually more important to families than the holiday itself. However, when we talk about the Byzantine so as well Greek church, the holiday is January 6. Armenians also on January 6. The Uniates will be celebrated on December 25. These dates will depend on historical political contexts, as well as who Christianized the area. Contrary to appearances, most Christians in the world celebrate January 6-7. Really? Everyone desires Spear of Destiny. Longinus was a centurion and the owner of a spear. Since, according to the law, burial cannot be performed during the Sabbath, at the request of mother, he hastened the death of the crucified man. Piercing his side. Jesus dies from spearing, not from crucifixion. It took two weeks to die from the crucifixion. Some say that because of this, deliverance was not fully accomplished. Longinus was blind, but the moment the blood splashed on him he regained his sight. What's worse, he became immortal for that. He will find peace after the apocalypse. He will bury everyone he loves. He is the first saint of the church and is rarely mentioned because of the spear. The spear of Longinus was supposed to give power over the world. It was wielded by Connor McNessa, also known as Conkobar, a character very closely related to the story of Jesus. An Irish king who legends say that Conkobar was born on the same day as Jesus Christ, though not in the same year, and also died on the same day that the Savior was crucified. Interestingly, powerful storms can be found all over the world in the description of this day. Another version, Anchobar died from a magic bullet, the so-called brain bullet, shot from a slingshot by Set Mac Magacha, which Connell made from the brain of the killed King of Leinster. The bullet lodged in King Conkobar's brain so that the doctors were unable to remove it and advised that the king would live as long as he avoided vigorous exercise and excitement. After a few years, the king was moved by the news of Christ's crucifixion, and a fragment fell out of his head, contributing to the ruler's death. Then Charlemagne possessed it, but he allegedly hid it. It is not known whether the Ottonian dynasty wielded a real spear. Hitler himself was looking for it and created the SS-44 unit, composed of outstanding archaeologists who were to search only for the grail and the spear. Dot. Stalin was also looking for it. Myth certainly gives it, because people flocked it like moths. Currently, as with many relics, we have several spears. One of them is said to belong to Longinus and is located in the Vatican in his statue.
The second one is more famous in Vienna. It's probably still impossible to photograph it. Not all of it is from the first century. Inside there is a fragment of a nail, probably from that period. A nail used for crucifixion. Longinus is proof that God forgives, but does not forget. Story of Longinus not to the end passed to the new version of Merciful God, so he disappeared over time, but he is a perfect character for a movie. Besides, there was a series with a deceased actor, talented, but unfinished, and indeed, at some point there was a lack of an idea. We probably ruined someone's saints and not just saints. Well at last it's Luciferian verses. Now Cynocephalus. Sometimes it is a time shift resulting from the calendar, and sometimes it is simply January 6th 07, it all depends on which Eastern Church we are talking about.